Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm Gus Katsiapis, and I'm a principal engineer in TFX. Hi, everyone. I'm Anusha. I'm a product manager in TFX. Today, we'll talk to you about our end-to-end -end ML platform, TensorFlow Extended, otherwise known as TFX, on behalf of the TFX team. So the discipline of software engineering has evolved over the last five plus decades to a good level of maturity. Um, if you think about it, this is both a blessing and a necessity because uh, our lives usually depend on it. Um, at the same time, the popularity of ML has been increasing rapidly over the last two plus decades. And over the last decade or so, it's been used very much, very actively, both in experimentation and in production settings. It is no longer uncommon for ML to power widely used applications that we, uh, we use every day. Um, so much like was the case for software engineering, the, the wide use of ML technology necessitates the evolution of the discipline from ML coding to ML engineering. As most of you know, to do ML in production, you need a lot more than just a trainer. Uh, for example, the trainer code in an ML production system is usually 5 to 10% of the majority of the entirety of the code. And similarly, the amount of time that engineers spend on the trainer is often dwarfed by the amount of time engineers spend in preparing the data, ensuring it's of good quality, ensuring it's unbiased, etc. At the same time, research eventually makes its way into production, and ideally, one wouldn't need to change stacks uh, in order to evolve an idea and put it into a product. So I think what is needed here is uh, flexibility and robustness and a consistent system that allows you to apply an ML in a product. And remember that the ML code itself is a tiny piece of the entire puzzle. Now, here is a concrete example of the difference between ML coding and ML engineering. As you can see in this use case, it took about three weeks to build a model. It's about a year. It's still not deployed in production. Similar stories used to be common at Google as well, but we made things noticeably easier over the past decade by building ML platforms like TFX. Now, ML platforms in Google is not a new thing. We've been building Google-scale machine learning platforms for quite a while now. Sybil existed as a precursor to TFX. It started about 12 years ago. A lot of the design, code, and best practices that we gain through Sybil have been incorporated into the design of TFX. Now, while TFX shares several core principles with Sybil, it also augments it under several important dimensions. This made TFX to be the most widely used end-to-end -end ML platform at Alphabet while being available on-premises and on GCP. The vision of TFX is to provide an end-to-end -end ML platform for everyone. By providing this ML platform, our goal is to ensure that we can proliferate the use of ML engineering, thus improving ML-powered applications. But let's discuss on what it means to be an ML platform and what are the various parts that are required to help us realize this vision. So today we're going to tell you a little bit more about how we enabled global-scale ML engineering at Google, from best practices and libraries all the way to a full-fledged end-to-end ML platform. So let's start from the beginning. Machine learning is hard. Doing it well is harder, and applying, doing it in production and powering applications is actually even harder. We want to uh, help others avoid the many, many pitfalls that we have encountered in the past, and to that end, we actually publish papers, blog posts, and other material that capture a lot of our learnings and our best practices. So. Um, here are but a few examples of our publications. They capture collective lessons learned more than a decade of applied ML at Google. And several of them, like the rules of machine learning, are quite comprehensive. Uh, we won't have time to go into them today as part of this talk, obviously, but we encourage you to take a look when you get a chance. While best practices are great, communication of best practices alone would not be sufficient. This does not scale because it does not get applied in code. So, we want to capture our learnings and best practices in code. We want to enable our users to reuse these best practices and at the same time give them the ability to pick and choose. To that extent, we offer standard and data parallel libraries. Now, here are a few examples of libraries that we offer for different phases of machine learning to our developers. As you can see, we offer libraries for almost every step of your ML workflow, starting from data validation to feature transformations to analyzing the quality of a model, all the way 
still serving that in production. We also make transfer learning easy by providing TensorFlow Hub. ML Metadata is a library for recording and retrieving metadata for ML workflows. Now, the best part about these libraries is that they are highly modular, which makes it easy to plug into your existing ML infrastructure. We have found that libraries are not enough within Alphabet, and we expect the same elsewhere. Uh, not all users need or want the full flexibility. Uh, some of them might actually be confused by it, and many users prefer out-of-the-box solutions. Uh, so what we do is manage the release of our libraries. We ensure they're nicely packaged and optimized. But importantly, we also offer higher-level APIs, and those come frequently in the form of binaries or components, or uh, containers, sorry. Yeah. Libraries and binaries provide a lot of flexibility to our users. But this is not sufficient for ML workflows. ML workflows typically involve inspecting and manipulating several types of artifacts. So we provide components which interact with well-defined and strongly typed artifact APIs. The components also understand the context and environment in which they operate in and can be interconnected with one another. We also provide UI components for visualization of the said artifacts. That brings us to a new functionality we are launching in TensorFlow World. You can run any TFX component in a notebook. As you can see here, you can run TFX components cell by cell. This example showcases a couple of components. The first one is example gen. Example gen ingests data into a TFX pipeline, and this is typically the first component that you use. The second one is statistics gen, which computes statistics for visualization and example validation. So when you run a component like statistics gen in notebook, you can visualize something like this, which showcases stats on your data, and it helps you detect anomalies. The benefit of running TFX components in a notebook is twofold. First, it makes it easy for users to onboard onto TFX. It helps you understand the various components of TFX and how you connect them and the order in which you can go. It also helps with debugging the various steps of your ML workflow as you go through the notebook. Through our experience, uh, though, we've learned that components aren't actually sufficient for uh, production ML. Manually orchestrating components can become cumbersome and, importantly, error-prone. Uh, and also understanding the lineage of all the artifacts that are produced by those components, that are produced or consumed by those components, is often fundamental, both from a debugging perspective, and, but many times from a compliance perspective as well. As such, we offer ways of creating task-driven pipelines of components. We, we allow you to stitch to get, uh, components together in a task-driven fashion. But we have also found that data scale and advanced use cases also necessitate this platform, this pipeline, to actually be reactive to the environment, right? So we found that over time we need more something like data-driven components. Now, the interesting part here is that the components we offer are the same components that can operate both in a task-driven task mode and in a data-driven mode, thereby enabling more flexibility. And the most important part is that the, art, the artifact lineage is tracked throughout this ML pipeline, whether it's task or data-driven, which helps experimentation, debugging, and compliance. So here's putting it all together. Here is kind of a canonical production end-to-end -end ML uh, pipeline. It starts with example generation, statistic generation to ensure the data is of good quality, proceeds with transformations to augment the uh, data in ways that make it easier to fit the model, Training the model, after we train the model, we ensure that it's of good quality, and only after we're sure it's, it meets the quality bar that we're comfortable with do we actually push to one of the serving systems of choice, whether that's a server or a mobile application TF Lite, via TF Lite. Note that the pipeline topology here is fully customizable, right? So you can actually move things around as you please. And importantly, if one of the out-of-the-box out components we offer doesn't work for you, you can create a custom component with custom business logic. And all of this is under a single uh, ML pipeline. Now, uh, what, does it need, what does it mean to be an end-to-end -end ML platform, right? So I think there are some key properties to it. And one is seamless integration, right? We want to make sure that all the components within, those pipeline actually, uh, within the pipeline actually seamlessly interoperate with each other. And we have actually found that within Google, the value added for our users gets larger as they move higher up the stack, you know, as they move higher from libraries, going further up to components and further up into, library, into the pipeline itself. This is because uh, uh, operating at a higher level of the abstraction allows us to give better robustness and supportability. 
Another important aspect of an ML platform is its interoperability with the environment it operates in. So each of those platforms might be employed in different environments, you know, some on-premises, some on GCP, et cetera, and we need to make sure that we interact with the ecosystem that you operate in. So TFX actually works with other parts of the, fundamental parts of the ML ecosystem, like Kubeflow pipelines, Apache Beam, uh, Apache Spark, Flink, Airflow, et cetera. This interoperability also gives us something else that's very important here, the flexibility, right? So we allow customization of components and extension points within the ML platform that allows you to, uh, if something doesn't work out of the box for you, it allows you to customize it to your business needs. TFX is by no means a perfect platform, but we strive to collect feedback and improve it. So please give it to us. Internally, TFX platform powers several alphabet companies. Within Google, it powers several of our most important products that you're probably familiar with. Also, TFX powers by integrates with cloud AI platform, ML engine and data flow products, and thus helping you realize your ML needs robustly on GCP. TFX also powers several of cloud auto ML solutions that automate and simplify ML for you. So check them out. To the external world, TFX is available as an end-to-end -end solution. Our friends at Twitter, who spoke at the keynote yesterday, talked about they have already published like a fascinating blog post on how they are ranking tweets on their home timeline using TensorFlow. They are using TensorFlow model analysis and TensorFlow Hub for sharing word embeddings. They evaluated several other technologies and frameworks and decided to go ahead with TensorFlow ecosystem for their production requirements. Similar to Twitter, we also have several other partners who are using TFX. I hope you will join us right after this talk to hear from Spotify on how they are using TFX for their production workflow needs. We also have another detailed talk later today called TFX, Production ML Pipelines with TensorFlow. So we have two great talks, one by Spotify, the other one detailed talk on TFX. If you're interested in learning more, check these two talks. Visit our webpage, tensorflow.org slash TFX to get started. Thank you.